The first time I saw my owner, Doug, he must be my destined master. I thought, Doug seemed to share the same sentiment. You follow me. We became inseparable from that day forward, and I had a strong feeling that Doug liked me just as much. Until the day I brought over the panties of the girl who came to Doug's house yesterday. To my surprise, Doug's girlfriend was delighted when she saw them. Uh, Those aren't mine. What the fuck? Doug claimed it was a Christmas gift, but his girlfriend pointed out that it was only January. I don't know why this led them to start arguing. Since that incident, I never saw Doug's girlfriend again. Doug didn't seem very happy afterward, and I became concerned. Out of concern, I followed him when he got his hair cut, when he played games with himself. I followed. I even tried to help him during his gaming sessions but he shoved me to the ground. I tried to comfort Doug when he got drunk at night, but he accused me of ruining his life. He said his girlfriend would never find out if I didn't mess around. I watched as Doug called his girlfriend, tears streaming down his face. In an attempt to cheer Doug up, I picked up a ball from a box nearby. However, the next moment... No! Doug scolded me harshly. I thought I must have done something wrong, but suddenly Doug stopped, and the look in his eyes suddenly scared me, but nothing happened that worried me. Doug even took me to the countryside, which was something he had never done before. Like this he threw the ball and I ran to catch it, but Doug just took off. I thought it must be Doug playing a game with me. When I returned home with the ball in my mouth, Doug was suddenly overjoyed. Doug seemed to develop a particular fondness for this game and began taking me to the countryside regularly. It became a routine, again and again, but I always managed to find my way back home. And Doug was thrilled with my ability as he watched me win the game over and over again. This ends now. That's it. Then he took me on a three-day, three-night drive further out from the west coast to the east coast, and the whole way was full of scenery I'd never seen before. Doug was truly dedicated. Then Doug started playing the game with me again, and I eagerly chased after the ball. Doug again stepped on the gas and took off. However, this time, I found the ball had been thrown behind a gate, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't reach it, but how could this be a challenge for me? Unexpectedly, I found myself unable to return the way I came. Still, I knew my owner believed in my ability to find my way back. So, I braved the drizzling rain and searched for an alternative route. Suddenly, I realized this game had lost its appeal because, at that moment, all I wanted was to go back home. As nighttime descended, exhaustion overcame me, but luckily, I found a piece of cardboard to rest on, just as I was falling asleep. A car zoomed by. I thought it might be Doug coming to check on me and hurriedly chased after it, but the car disappeared without a trace. Then, two large black dogs appeared right before me. I opened my mouth to explain, but the ball fell out. I asked them for directions, but they took my ball. I tried to get it back, but they asked me if I wanted the ball or my life. But the next moment, a voice came out and shouted at them for disturbing its sleep and the two black dogs were attracted. But the next moment, it turned out to be a bluffing Boston Terrier. What's up, bitches? It even provoked them by saying that it was crazy and if you don't believe me, come and bite it. The Boston Terrier promptly ran over to a trash can and started playing a game. The two big dogs were intimidated and quickly slinked away. The Boston Terrier, whose name turned out to be Bug, then approached me and offered to take me away. But I still want my ball. And Bug asked me how long I'd been wandering. But I'm not a stray dog. I retorted that I have an owner and was just playing a game. Unexpectedly, Bug burst into laughter. A hearty belly laugh that lifted his entire body. Bug then told me news that shocked me. I was now a stray dog. And what I thought was a game was simply my owner's way of abandoning me. Before I could process this revelation, Bug told me that if I wanted to survive in this place, I had to follow certain rules. Whenever I fancied something, I should mark it with a P, establishing it as my territory. Then Bug asked me to do it again, like this. Well, I'm, I'm not a stray. You're fucking stray now, that's my point. Yeah, okay. Oh, wow. Then Bug explained the second rule, if you like something, just climb right up on it, as evidenced by the sofa covered in paw prints. Finally, Bug imparted the third and most crucial rule, we must rely solely on ourselves because humans would only deceive us and brainwash us. I tried to argue, but Bug reminded me that I was now a stray dog, so I had to fend for myself. Next, Bug took me to a place where humans walked us. He shared a theory with me, humans kept us only for one purpose they needed our poop. 
just like the woman before meticulously collecting it, and it was highly likely they used it to make dog poop chocolate. Bug then brought me to its home, where I met Bug's friends, a Vimaraner named Hunter and a poodle named Maggie. But the first thing Bug said was that I was a stray. That's not right. I tried to explain that it was all part of a game with my owner. But the next moment, my stomach growled loudly. I thought I should go find Doug and talk to him about today's grievances. But Bug scolded me, telling me I needed to recognize my identity as a stray dog. So, they decided to take me out to eat, and we waited outside a restaurant. Hoping for an opportunity, I was puzzled when suddenly their eyes lit up. The opportunity had arrived. Drop the fucking pizza. Wait for it. Bitch. That's the one. That's the one. And just like that, we enjoyed a meal, complete with soup. Although I was initially hesitant, seeing them eat so heartily tempted me to join in. After filling our bellies, we headed to the park and had a refreshing bath. Clearly, Bug and his friends savored post-meal moments, even coaxing me to join in. Oh yeah. However, you know what they say, after letting loose and indulging, a profound sense of emptiness follows. So, I started thinking about my owner, Doug. Maggie tried to convince me that Doug probably didn't like me. Otherwise, he wouldn't have abandoned me in such a distant place. But I wanted to argue back, saying that letting me eat his leftovers instead of dog food was a sign of love. However, I suddenly realized something profound. If Doug didn't actually like me, not buying me dog food could also make sense. At that moment, I felt genuinely heartbroken. Could it be that all these years, I had been living under a misconception? Suddenly, it dawned on me that what I had believed was only my own perception. Perhaps Doug never truly liked me, and bringing me home was merely an attempt to please his girlfriend. I had messed things up for Doug, and now he had no reason to keep me around. Oh, oh, bad dog! Bad dog! Worse. Oh. In the fucking world. But I still wanted to go back because I couldn't accept this reality. Bug and the other dogs seemed a bit confused, so I repeated my thoughts. Bug and the other three dogs suddenly seemed to agree with me, and they wondered why they hadn't thought of this great idea earlier. Filled with admiration, they immediately wanted to become blood brothers with me, and I quite liked the idea of the ceremony. Oh. 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 And I love the ceremony. It's like having me and you, and me and you. That's what a brotherhood is all about. Next, we set out for Doug's house to seek revenge. However, we were just handsome for a few seconds before we got lost. Bug tried to say something when suddenly an eagle swooped down and grabbed Bug. Bug actually took flight, which was quite an honorable experience for a dog. But we were worried about Bug, so we hurriedly chased after the eagle. Eventually, I managed to leap and bite Bug's leg midair. Unexpectedly, the eagle shook and took off again. And this time we flew even higher. But holy fuck! Holy shit. This was the first time in my dog life that I had flown so high. I could see distant mountains, and the nearby forest was right in front of us. No, the woods in front of us, so I swung my body. Luckily, the eagle was flying high. Oh, God! Chris, what are you doing? It's too well! Well, shit. But the next moment my best friend Bug and I just kept falling out of the tree. Luckily, I was smart. But what was in front of us? Three squirrels saw this embarrassing scene. Luckily, nothing serious happened. And we all encouraged each other before continuing our journey to seek revenge on Doug. But we hadn't gone far when we realized, sadly, that we were hungry. And then Hunter found some squirrel poo. Bug immediately called Hunter a dumb dog. Even though people say we love it, we really don't eat that stuff. But that's when I found a bunch of goodies. It made them very curious. Without hesitation, I indulged myself and savored the delightful flavors. My fellow bug, a bunch of silly dogs, joined in, eagerly devouring the goodies. 
However, shortly after our feast, an unexpected anomaly unfolded. Maggie actually saw countless Hunter appear in front of its eyes. Then Bug's infinite split. And then Hunter's Elizabethan collar actually enlarged infinitely. But soon enough, Hunter's Elizabethan collar began shrinking without bounds. Bug suddenly found his sofa talking to its. To make matters worse, the couch was abruptly snatched away by an eagle, leaving Bug in a fit of rage. And I found Doug, my beloved owner, shaving his hair with a plug from a tree. And then, we stumbled upon a trove of toy rabbits, igniting our excitement as we gleefully engaged in play. We played until we completely tore the toy bunnies to shreds, eventually succumbing to a deep slumber. However, upon waking up, we were astonished to discover a sea of white fur. No, it wasn't toys. It was real rabbits. In that moment, we were consumed by remorse. Those mushrooms turned out to be poisonous. In a frenzy, we hastily buried the bunnies and observed a solemn three-minute silence in their memory. But the next moment, a police dog suddenly arrived. Upon its arrival, we immediately dropped to the ground. But soon, another police dog joined in. The first one was apparently an auxiliary dog. Bug, the foolish dog. Nervously claimed he hadn't eaten any rabbits, but the police dog asserted that they were here in the forest searching for a missing little girl. It was a close call, indeed. But then, in an unexpected turn of events, Hunter stood up. The auxiliary dog was just about to command Hunter to sit when it quickly recognized its old classmate. They enthusiastically greeted each other. It turned out that their paths had diverged after graduation. One became a police dog while the other became a homeless wanderer. The old classmate warmly offered to take Hunter out of the woods. But when we stepped outside, the unexpected happened. I didn't realize my old classmates were unreliable. That's how we were put in the police station. But how could we be trapped? Looking at the keys in front of us, Hunter suddenly summoned all his strength and climbed up. In the next moment, Hunter extended a tool a tool for sure. Maggie also bravely appeared to encourage Hunter. And at this moment, countless brothers who were locked up couldn't help but shout Hunter's name. But unexpectedly the next moment, looks like Hunter wasn't long enough after all. However, in the next moment, I had a brilliant idea. Every time we poop, the humans are collecting it. Right? So this poop was our ticket. I quickly rallied all our good brothers in the cage. And like this, we all worked together to make a poop. If you can't get one down, you have to rely on your friends to help you. And after a pile of poop, you get another pile. And at this moment, the administrator finally caught a whiff of something. When he entered our cage, he was indeed shocked. It was a surprise. Absolutely a surprise. But looking at us, the caretaker opened the door and walked in. In the next moment, the administrator fell into our trap. At this point, there was no stopping the unleashed dog army. Countless good brothers leaped over the administrator, who was left in tears. And I suddenly noticed my ball. We had finally broken out of our cages, but it had been at the expense of the administrator's misery. Next, it was time for me to seek revenge on that despicable former owner, Doug. After three days and nights of a long journey, I finally arrived at Doug's house. Yeah, it wasn't my house anymore. I quietly pushed the door open and placed the ball inside. As I looked at the mess inside the house, Doug's reprimand seemed to echo in my mind once again. No matter where I went, Doug's voice calling me a bad dog was always there. So, I dug a hole and buried the ball in it. That was my past, and I wanted to bury it and start a new life. Goodbye. But as I returned to the house, Doug suddenly walked in. So, I slowly approached him. Initially, I had thought of retaliating against Doug because he had abandoned me countless times. But as soon as Doug spoke, I instinctively lowered my head, trying to please him and win his approval, because I loved him, and I hoped Doug could love me too. Doug seemed to be carefully listening to the voice of my heart. I felt there was hope. So, I told Doug about my adventures along the way. <laughs> But to my surprise, he didn't respond at all in the end. I instantly felt a chill in my heart. Forget it. Forget it. But just as I was about to walk to the door, Doug closed the door viciously. And then he picked up a baseball bat and came at me viciously, pounding me with it one after another and said. Then Doug raised the bat. But in the next moment, my good friends arrived, leaving Doug utterly bewildered. Looking at the growling hunter, Doug even had the audacity to insult him, calling hunter all bark and no bite. Hunter infuriated, immediately shook off his restraints. The next moment Hunter attacked, but just as Doug was struggling, he accidentally bumped into his smoking gun. The next moment, the fire is ignited, but Hunter is thrown off by Doug. Instead, Maggie tries to pull Doug, 
Not realizing that Doug has hit himself in the foot with a stick, Doug then limped after Bug. But one swing sent the oven flying. Doug is furious and says he wants meat. But then he kicks through the wall. Doug then turned around and saw me, his anger rising as he charged toward me. However, anger often overcomes reason, and Doug's actions were undeniably self-destructive. I decided it was time to leave before things got any worse, leaving Doug's rear end intact. But just as I was about to depart, Doug suddenly grabbed me, gnashing his teeth, and claimed that I had ruined his life. However, he failed to reflect on his own actions, Doug then began to exert force on me. And at that moment, I suddenly felt unable to breathe. But then, Hunter and the others intervened. As Doug attempted to rise, Hunter forcefully pinned him down. Then Bug and Maggie pulled Doug's legs apart and waited for me to strike the final blow and cut off his brother. However, just as I hesitated, Doug began to speak again. Fucking dog! I can't take it anymore. You're right. I'm a bad dog. At that moment, Doug began to struggle desperately. But I was determined not to give up easily. Biting with your mouth and then scratching with your paws is what happens when you treat your dog badly. Having settled the score, we left that place. Doug staggered out of the house, having lost everything, his home, his girlfriend, and even his pride. Caring for dogs starts with me. Don't let humans be the last of the animals.